Alrighty guys, how you going? So, next day, um, it's been overcast day, so it's been a bit cooler. Um, but anyway, to be honest, I haven't done a lot more research with the um, motherboard tray. I've still got to try and figure some stuff out there. Um, but <clears throat> I think my graphics card should be okay. Um, I did a wee, wee bit of research on some of the latest model um, graphics cards, like some of the real big high-end ones um, that are like horrendous money. Um, I think US, I think they're sort of like $1,500 um, more over here in New Zealand by the time they put the, the taxes and all that sort of crap on them. They're bloody near three grand. Um, from what I can work out, they're about three, oh, 300, <clears throat> about 300 millimetres long, or they're about, some of them are a bit longer, it depends on the model, but they're, <clears throat> from what I can see, they're a maximum of sort of about 130 mils, or, so 100 mils is four inches, um, so they're sort of about five, five and a bit inches, um, Deep in here where they lock in. So I should sneak in behind this. So I could have this sitting here. But what I might do is I might just push this back. Um, to, uh, maybe an inch and a half or something like that. Just to make sure that I'm not going to have any issues. Or, or somebody else isn't going to have any issues. Move. <laughs> the other thing I'm going to do today, I'd actually like to get this, the bulk of things sorted out. Maybe not final mounting points for the hard drives and stuff like that, but I want to get um, the bulk of any other things I've got to attach to this, like steel and bits and pieces. Like the hard drive shouldn't be too difficult. Um, this one's so old, it's only got the side mounting points on it. But I've got another one that I just took out of my computer, which has still got info, information on it, but it's backed up stuff. So it's, um, I might bring that here, out here and just compare it with the P notes with this one. Because they do have mounting points on the back now too. Well, this, actually this does. I'll, I'll just compare it to the, the new one, because this is... So I would like this is oh is there a manufacturer's date on this? Look it's really old. Um, we'll put it this way, it's only um it's at 40 gig hard drive which is tiny. Yeah, two thousand and two. So like it's eighteen years old. Um, coming out to 19 years old, so like they haven't made 40 gig hard drives for oh, I don't know a long time. I think it's only 40 gig. Yeah, 40 gigabytes. So yeah, they haven't made hard drives that small and used this pin configuration for it a long time. Um, so, but anyway, I think the basic screw hole layout has not changed in a long time so you yeah, can pick up on these points but I will I'll just I'll go grab that other hard drive actually I'll do that now and bring it out here I don't really want it out here because it's still got info on it I don't want to get dust and shit but I'll bring it out here for reference I'll be back right I'm back so <clears throat> this is a more modern hard drive I'll show you the connectors for a start off. Not that you really matter, but you can see how like this, these here are like totally different to that. Um, so, <clears throat> but this this one here is like not even that modern now anymore. Um, I think it's 2013 or something, but like, and this is quite a small drive um, nowadays. This is 500 gigabytes, um, so that's 40 
<laughs> it's quite a difference. <laughs> um, but I replaced this with three terabytes um, just because I keep running out of storage um, spaces in my um, in the computer. So basically, what I did is I took a lot of the old videos and stuff I had, jammed it all on this, plus some. I think I backed up some some photos and crap and jammed it all on this <clears throat> and took it out and then put the three terabyte in there and I think I, I think I copied some bits and pieces that I might want onto my three terabyte off this as well but um but <clears throat> the mounting holes and these are the same still um, and underneath so these four holes in here are still the same one there so this is just good to mock up with because um, then I can keep this out of the shit I can put this back inside so that's good I hadn't actually cross referenced that so yeah like all these mounting holes are all the same so that's cool so I can use this to mock up when I anchor because probably what I'll do is I'll pick up a lot of people use <coughs> A lot of cases um, in mine also pick up on these points now, so you can like just put four screws in here. Sometimes they have like a little rubber, um, what do you want to call it, a little rubber freaking buffer stopper, whatever, that the screw goes through, just so these don't earth out into a chassis, obviously with electrical connections and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll pick up on these points to um, <clears throat> mount them in, you can see me, in here, so I'll, I'll work that out too, um, how I'm going to do that, I'm not 100% sure yet, because so I would like to put a position for a couple of, couple of three in here, and leave enough gap for Obviously for cables and stuff to snake around over. So be something like something like that with a bit of gap in between. Then get cables around and then a power supply will be down the bottom. And then I'll probably do the same down here. And then I've also got the smaller form factor in these, which are the two and a half inch drives. Which are basically if you cut, they're not quite, but you'd cut sort of like that much off, and they're probably a little bit longer. Um, which a lot of um, solid state drives are now, because these are old spinning drives, which are um, like the big drives are still good for a lot of storage. If you have a lot of a lot of files that you just want to keep, that's sort of why I've got the three terabyte one. I want to get another one. Just so when I've finished using all my footage and bits and pieces, I can store it in spinning drives and I can leave my high speed drives for everyday use stuff. Or when I'm video editing, what I'll do is all the footage I take off my phone or my camera or whatever, I load onto my um, high speed drives, which they call as an M.2, which is like a little, looks like a stick of chewing gum pretty much, which you can actually clip directly onto this board. Nowadays, um, they're super fast, and they can you can get them in pretty decent sizes too, like storage capacities. But they're perfect for um, when you're video editing because they're such high speed transfer rates um, that they just makes life really simple, and the computer doesn't have to work as hard to shift the data around when you're video editing and all that sort of stuff. It can just it can transfer it so fast with some of these high speed drives nowadays but the um, you can still get the high speed drives in um, with two and a half inch form factor not super high speed but they're a hell of a lot quicker than these um, like a good one of these is uh, basically you know like you upload and your download speed on the internet like a good upload and download speed um, when I'm talking like not high-end upload and download speed which I know 
you can download like about a terabyte a second if you've got the top notch, con top notch connection. But um, like with a say like a hundred megabytes per second um, upload and download, you can transfer a lot of data pretty quick. Um, whereas here, when I'm uploading videos, like I'm struggling to get probably seven or eight megabytes per second just because of I'm using the phone data. Um, because we don't really have a dedicated landline or, you know, like fibre connection here. Um, we could do, but um, it's mum and dad's house and they've got a, like a, a 5G portable system that they can take anywhere in their camper. So they can, they just hook it into the house when, they, when they're here, when they're in the camper, they just unplug it, plug it into the camper through a power source and they can just drive around. They've got internet wherever they can go. And it's got a real high strength um, receiver in it, like cell phone receiver, um, like a way stronger than a normal phone. So they, they've got reception pretty much anywhere, except for like some really major dead spots. But anyway, but apart from that, so like coming back to these, um, just trying to educate just some of these guys a little bit. So like a, a one of these old spinning mechanical hard drives probably maximum of 150 megabytes per second transfer speed. Um, the modern form factor SSD, which is in a two and a half inch drive, is about 500 megabytes per second transfer speed, give or take. But um, these modern N.2s, if you get the right specifications, because you can get them, you can get them in just the, like, the sort of like the same sort of specifications what these are, which is just like a normal solid state, but you can get like a high speed ones mm -hmm. and they've actually just released fast ones again but they'll be like um, instead of 500 megabytes per second they are like two three four thousand megabytes per second and some are even faster than that now because they're new generation stuff but like when you've that's what i've got for my main storage from the main windows operation and when i'm transferring video data back and forth between programs, that's what I use, I use one of those high speed ones and it's about 3000 megabytes per second transfer speed so it makes it really snappy when you're doing that sort of stuff, just takes so much load off the system, not trying to drag, you know, big huge files, video files that are say 30 or 40 minutes long and you're trying to chop it down and use bits and pieces or high speed it, um, so you, you're transferring, say, like, but my average videos um, before I probably shrink it down into, say, like a 30 or 40 minute video or, or less, depending on what size it is. I could have um, 30 or 40 megabytes, no, sorry, gigabytes of video. So that's a lot of store, a lot of footage to transfer um, off a spinning drive. So yeah, that's why I use the M.2 to load all the videos too. And then once I'm finished with it and done all my video editing and got the video up on YouTube, then I'll transfer it and store it in a big old mechanical spinning drive. Um, <coughs> but anyway, get away from all that shit. So the other thing, yeah, I want to do is set up these fans. I'm going to use a couple of strips of these down here, mount them on, work out what I'm going to use to do mount some hard drives on. Um, so I've got three in my computer at the moment, big ones, um, with a big form factor. I'm probably only in out with two once I get another three terabyte one. Um, and then I've also got a one smaller one in the two and a half inch drive size, but it's still in the spinning one. I'd actually like to eventually get one of those just like the 500 megabyte transfer speed ones so if I've got maybe some like music and bits and pieces for um, video editing I can store that in there not on my, high, my super high speed drive because music files aren't that big so it won't matter if it's not on a super mega high speed drive I can store a lot of that sort of stuff and little permanent clips I could probably store on that 
sort of semi-fast drive. Um, but anyway, so I need to try and get all that sort of sorted and I'll do some more research on this, get this sorted. Um, and I also need to work out how I'm going to attach these to there. Um, you would normally use, like I said, like a little, what they call a little, it's like a, it looks like a little nut that's got a, like a bolt on the end of it, what they call a standoff. They're not very long, but they just stand up a little bit. I did show you one one other time. I did have one here. <laughs> one. I don't, wouldn't have a clue where it's going to. But I can actually show you on here sort of what it's like. Basics, like that little thing there that they screw into the board. Um, so I need to find out how I'm going to screw them into that. They would screw into that, but they wouldn't hold very long because um, they would eventually rip out of the ply if you're removing the case around a bit. Um, so I want to see if I can get some, some sort of insert so I can put them here. They made it from the back, so when you screw those things in, they're reasonably solid in there. I do know you can get different things like that, but I just need to see what I can get hold of. And I want to organise um, to get some some screws and bits and pieces to obviously to just hold those and the little rubber grommets that go in between and get some screws and standoffs and all the bits and bits of these pieces that you actually need to hold this stuff together. Because I don't want to pinch it out of my good case. I've got a bit of stuff here from some of these ones I've pulled apart, which will help. But yeah. But anyway, I'll stop crapping on and I'll get this stuff sorted. I'll go put this away.
try and show you this if I can. There's a fan here. So we want to put, at least if you can see, in here. So I need to. I really need to put the steel bars back. I can't get them in there. That would be too much for push, I think. I need to come back into. I might as well just stick them in the middle here, which I didn't really want to do. It makes it freaking awkward to get anything in there. Um, I might have to make these bars removable. So instead of welding them on there, I might have to make them removable so you can get them in and out. Which is a bit of a pain. I don't really want them permanent. Uh, because if you had them back here, you could have sort of slipped stuff in there. Not that it's ideal, because you'd... They only need to be removable. So I can probably drill and tap this. Right, so... Hopefully you can see that. Um, I'll have a wee think about this. Bit of bar in here. So I, I want to put um, perforated mesh behind here just just um, I might even hot glue gun it on here or something like that just and behind each one of these sections just to help so when you look in here you can't see everything that's in there if you know what I mean um, but yeah, like these are good that against there. You really need to be give me a little bit of clearance. I need to be there about there somewhere. So it's not hard up against the grill shell in this corner because I don't really want to have to try and sand off the, these well, I don't really want to have to sand off like this bit of lip here like I could just take it back so it's flat but oh God, I can't be bothered with all that a lot of work just for nothing. Um, just trying to decide. Um, whether I just cut two bars and put them down there, bolt them on, screw them on or something like that. And have it so you can put these on. Because I have to keep fairly flat screws. So I think I should find the screws that come with these. I think they actually go on um because what I'll do is I'll try and hide the wiring down there because I fucking Ketchup and mustard, that's what you get for buying cheap, cheap ones, but I'm not too worried about that. They mean that like the multicolored, uh, what they call ketchup and mustard, wiring, instead of just all black. But like, like you could put sleeves on it or whatever, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't worry me a whole lot. Um, yeah. Where's pins on it? Yeah. I think I have to keep it. Just make it 
even the other sides and I'll just tack screw it on or something like that and we'll sort out the better solution later just don't want to weld it on so it makes it awkward to get stuff in like if you have to undo four screws and um, clip that like four fans off in one heap it's not going to matter a lot if you ha happen to have to change something because once you get the motherboard tray in there it's not going to have a lot of other access I got a, a um, bit of a box of uh, short tech screws here um, for steel um, that I can use to hold these on and at the end of the day I can actually probably come along once I've got them drilled through and probably actually just nick the drill bit off the end of it with a, um, with a grinder so they actually like sit in there nice and flush and actually look half nice, not just big ugly pieces hanging out the back. But anyway, so I might pre-drill the holes, but I'll just see how we go here. Get some lined up. Because I've got a whole box of them, so I ain't going to run out. <laughs> I ain't going to run out. <laughs> I knew I had some somewhere. So I'm back here again, I just had to go sort some stuff out that we were going to do for New Year's because we weren't sure what we were doing, because the weather doesn't look that great. Right, so, working on my game plan here, I think we're right with these bars, except for I've got to fix that screw because it broke the freaking head off it, now I can't get it off. Anyway. Uh, 
Nice foot in there. That will be pretty swanky, hopefully. Do the job. One, two, three. stressed if I can't get faith in there. <laughs> the forest. <laughs> I think six will be plenty. It's tight for that side, isn't it? Oops. Up for a Dug out the um, <coughs> little packets of screws that these fans come with, just to see what actually holds these screw into. Because these have got holes that go all the way through, and then these ones, which I assume might be for these, but I don't really know. So let's have a wee look. If I can decide what I'm doing here. These aren't terribly long either. They're not really designed to be going through um, three mil um, angle on. Not that it's that terribly thick, but when the screws are only that long, <laughs> it's um, yeah. They will go through there. Just play short. Um, so they will go through there and and screw in. I don't know if you can see that a bit. Um, I, I can countersink this a little bit. Um, I'm more interested to see. Okay, so you just screw into those holes. They just grab into the plastic, obviously. Yeah. So that's all they do. So I can quite simply just drill holes through there. Just give them a, just a mild countersink with another bit. Um, and just so they'll sit in the reasonably flush and they'll hold them there fine. I wasn't sure whether they were actually just screwed into the plastic or the um, whatever, if you know what I mean. So that's cool. So they'll go on either way and just screw into that plastic. Right, that's easy enough then. I'll see if I can I'll take these off. Put a little drill bit. go through and I'll just gently mark the holes and figure out where I want to place a couple of these and um, see what we're doing but I'll, before I pull that back off I'll mark where I need them to be Not so much 
just the in the holes. I should have worked it out. Put one then, I'll measure the, the spacings. If I can, I can get any of that one. If I back this off right here, I'll space that a little bit. But if I put a little spacer in here, I can still get that in there. It just relieves it off. So I can put all four in there if I want to. Bottoms of these things. Yeah, that'd be a rough idea. See if I can get some holes drilled. Three fans in there, all ready to go. Um, obviously not permanently in there, but um, all screwed. I just I screwed these holes very slightly larger, um, so I will enlarge these ones because this one here was um, distorting slightly. So obviously the holes just don't line up perfectly. It was distorting, and this one didn't stop spinning. So the back screws off a little bit. So if I enlarge those holes, it just give it a little bit more relief. To get it obviously closer to the dead center for each one. So I'm, just, I'm going to test fit this again. Let's see how that looks. So you can barely see them, but they are in line with the, the belt bars, and not with the thick one. They're not over covering over these ones there and these holes. So 
going to get as much ear through there as possible. Yeah. And by the time I put some mesh in behind here, nobody will know. Um, I may get some, because um, I noticed Arco's Manti bookshelf thing that he's got in his workshop with a, um, I think it's got a board grill on it or whatever it is, truck grill, um, like the big long one. I notice it's got coloured lights in it, so I might get some, I might get some RGB strip lights, just one, and put it um, over the outside of the frame or something like that, and just have it. So there's like, you can just get a, a soft glow, and it'll be behind the steel, so it'll won't actually shine out bright. It'll be just a soft glow. I might do that just for lighting, apart from what's on. Other bits, which is mainly just my motherboard at the moment. So that's wrapped on. Loving this, how it's working out now. It's coming together. Um, yeah. So what I'll do is I'll tear and do the next one, and then I'll undo these, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Mm. But whether I show that on camera or not, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Anyway. Young guys, so just a quick little update of what I've been doing. So I'm just um, doing the last modifications to this basic frame before I start putting components in. First, of the components I'm starting to put in um, and get set up to where I want them um, with the fans in the front, another you know, row at the back. I haven't decided yet, may put some at the top as well for ventilation. Um, obviously this is on here. I haven't done any extra mods since possibly last time um, So yeah, that's what I've got going on um, At the moment, I'm probably going to use um, Plywood for in here for the backing tray Same on the back here um, This is just a mock-up pass ply Like a really old one but still the same principle, the power supply is going to be in here because this is going to be covered it's going to be just enough room to pop in and out and the side panel will come off and on so I can get that in and there um, I've got to cut and shorten this yet so I've obviously got to fully weld all this but I'm going to leave these screwed on with tech screws um, I will tidy the back up and put some nicer screws in there at some point but I want to have these removable so if somebody wants to get in here um, to put a component in um, without taking the motherboard and everything all out, what they're going to do is undo four screws and possibly just undo and unplug the fans and pull them out of the road to get something in one side or the other. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Righty. All right, how are you going, guys? <clears throat> so I'm just give you a quick look at what I've doesn't look like I've done much more but I've done the base um, I now have you can see in there these fans in there um, there should be two rows of them I've actually only got three in there at the moment but it's a fourth one I actually took out and tested in my um, my system but another row of fans in here so I'm just 
do, I thought I'd do a quick video of what it looks like now. Obviously that's going to be up further. Just testing the power cord in here. The bike chain will be um, cut and split amongst these. It's going to be like a, a metal spider made out of nuts and bolts and bits of chain up the top. So I'll just give you a quick little video.